Thank you for joining our presentation tonight. Um, we'll be getting started in just a second. Once again, thank you for joining our presentation tonight. My name is Magna and I'm an organizer with the Asian Law Alliance. Tonight we'll be going over um, some dates and deadlines for the upcoming primary election. We'll be talking about what's on the ballot, some important things to keep in mind as a voter in Santa Clara County. And we're really hoping to help you get ready to vote and learn how you can get engaged with voter registration and outreach efforts um, in your own community for the upcoming election. So before we begin, I have a quick outline here. So we're going to do a quick introduction. Um, we're gonna be talking about why it's important to vote. We'll go over some different elections and offices that are up for re-election. We'll be discussing some propositions and measures specific to Santa Clara County. We'll be going over voting eligibility, um, how you can register to vote, and then um, the election timeline. And finally, um, ways for you to get involved in your own community. So a little bit about us. Asian Law Alliance is a nonprofit organization that provides um, multilingual legal services, community education, and advocacy um, for Asian Pacific Islander and also low-income populations in San Jose and the larger Santa Clara County. Um, and some of our program areas include housing, public benefits, civil rights and civic engagement, immigration and family law. If you are in need of a free legal consultation, you can feel free to give us a call at the number below. You can also find this number on our website, AsianLawAlliance.org. So now I want to encourage everyone to take a second to think a little bit about um, what casting a ballot um, can help us do. Um, really thinking about why we should vote and why we should get civically engaged. So some of the reasons we have here, um, casting a ballot can help us let our voices be heard. It can help us decide who represents us um, in our local and state government. It can also allow us to hold our elected officials accountable. And um, most importantly, can help um, our community make important decisions um, and make a positive difference. So a little bit about elections. So what is an election? It's a contest for different political offices, propositions and measures, um, which can affect all levels of government um, at the federal, state and local level. So some of these examples, um, federal elections um, involve things like um, the general election, um, an election for the president um, and also our senators and representatives. At the state level, um, you might be voting for, say, the governor, the lieutenant governor, secretary of state, the attorney general, and et cetera. Um, at more local elections like county and city, you might be voting for the board of supervisors, your district attorney, your sheriff, and your superior court judges. And then um, for city elections, you'll be voting for um, your mayor and your council members. There are also additional local elections like school districts, and there are many issue areas that voters may be concerned about um, and tend to um, thoroughly consider before casting a ballot, um, whether it's for a measure or a candidate, because who you vote for and what you vote for can affect the policies that you care about. And some issue areas that voters tend to pay some attention to um, include things like education, healthcare, criminal justice, housing, economic growth, um, and a whole variety of other issue areas. Um, and while certain areas um, can involve multiple levels of government, um, there are certain issue areas that um, are better addressed at specific levels of government. So for example, um, immigration is handled at the federal level, um, state and county, um, you're looking at things like public benefits. Um, and then when it comes to the county and city, you might be looking at local law enforcement, zoning and land use. And then for things like um, schools, um, that's in the jurisdiction of the school district. So now we'll be going over some of the roles and responsibilities of different offices that are up for election. Um, so in the general election, um, we'll be voting for our next president. Uh, our president has a four-year term with a max of two terms. Our president is known to be the head of state and the commander-in-chief of our armed forces 
the president is responsible for implementing and enforcing the laws written by Congress um, and appointing the heads of the federal agencies and the cabinet um, who are responsible for day-to-day -day enforcement and administration of federal laws. The president um, also signs legislation into law or um, the president can also veto bills um, that are enacted by Congress. The president conducts diplomacy with other nations and negotiates and signs treaties. The president also issues executive orders. Um, and the president can also extend pardons and clemencies for federal crimes. Um, this is obviously not an exhaustive list, um, but these are just a, some of the uh, main roles and responsibilities that a president has. And now um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the US House of Representatives. Um, if you are elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, you're elected to a two-year term um, serving the people of a specific congressional district. We have a total of 435 representatives, um, and this number, the number of representatives um, per state, is proportionate to uh, the population itself. And California um, has a total of 52 congressional districts. Um, some of the things that our representatives do is that they introduce bills and resolutions. Um, they also offer amendments and they are also part of different committees. Um, and the representatives, they're also initiating revenue and appropriation bills. They can also impeach federal officials and elect the president in the case of an electoral college tie. Um, we also have U.S. Senators. Um, the This branch is typically composed of um, 100 uh, senators, two for each state, where each U.S. Senator represents the entire state. Um, this is a six-year term, um, and they stagger it so that about one-third of the Senate is up for re-election every two years. Um, if you're a senator, um, you might be confirming those of the president's appointments that require consent. Um, and you might also be providing advice and consent to ratify treaties. Um, U.S. Senators, they take actions on bills, resolutions, amendments, motions, nominations, and treaties um, by voting. Um, and they can also conduct impeachment trials to convict an executive or a judicial official. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about um, state specifics. So in California, um, we have um, 80 members are elected for two-year terms, with each member representing approximately um, 4,900,000 people. Um, and the California State Assembly is the lower chamber of um, the California State Legislature. Legislature, um, And alongside the California State Senate, um, forms the legislative branch of the California State Government. And they also work alongside the governor of California, um, to create laws and establish a state budget. Um, legislative authority and responsibilities also include things like passing bills on public policy matters, uh, setting levels for state spending, raising and lowering taxes, and voting to uphold or override gubernatorial vetoes. Um, in 2024, which is this year, all seats for our California State Assembly will be up um, for election. Um, now a little bit about our California State Senators. Um, we have 40 members, are elected for four-year terms with each member representing approximately um, 980,000 um, people. Um, this is the upper chamber of the California State Legislature, and they're responsible for writing the laws of the state and drafting the state's plan for public spending. Um, the Senate also has additional responsibilities, um, which the uh, Assembly does not, um, which is co confirmation of hundreds of the officials nominated by the governor for service in the executive branch. Um, and in 2024, all California state senators representing odd number districts will be up for election, and we have um, 20 of these odd number districts. Um, in the South Bay, um, uh, we have uh, Senate District 13, 15, and 17, and these are the areas that they represent, um, and these districts are also going to be up uh, for election. Now, um, we're looking more into the county um, and city level, so more at the local level. Um, we have the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors, and there are a total of five members 
um, who are elected by district on a nonpartisan basis for four years, um, staggered terms with a limit of three terms. Um, the Board of Supervisors, they establish policies to address issues that affect the operation of the county government. They're also responsible for an annual operating and capital improvement budget. They can make decisions related to a wide range of services, including um, hospital and healthcare, law enforcement corrections, library services, social services, um, and general government programs. They also oversee um, most county departments and programs, and they annually approve their budgets. Um, they also supervise the official conduct of county officers and employees, controls all county property, and appropriates and spends money on programs that meet um, county resident needs. And the seats that are up for election this time around are Supervisor District 2, 3, and 5. Um, now looking at the city level, um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the San Jose mayor. Um, the San Jose mayor is responsible for recommending policy, program, and budget priorities to the city council, um, which in turn approves policy direction for the city. Uh, the mayor is elected by the community at large and serves as the council chair um, and as the 11th member of the council. They have a four-year term. Um, the mayor... Uh, responsibility is to address community members um, and share policy plans and proposals. They also prepare, recommend, and submit an initial annual budget proposal and preside over and vote in council meetings. Um, because of the passage of Measure, of measure B, um, the San Jose mayoral election will now be moved from the gubernatorial election cycle to the presidential election cycle beginning 2024. So that means that San Jose residents um, will be voting for um, a new mayor uh, this this year. Now a little bit about the San Jose City Council. Um, this legislative body um, represents the community and is empowered by the city charter to formulate citywide policy, adopt laws and ordinances and approve budgets. Uh, it is a 10 council member um, 10 council members are elected during a regular municipal election by voters and districts. Um, and they also are responsible for approving the city budget, adopting ordinances to help the city serve its community members and appoints members to various boards and commissions. These are the seats up for election this year, council district two, four, six, eight, and 10. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about the propositions and measures specific um, in Santa Clara County. Um, we have a statewide proposition, Prop 1, um, which authorizes $6.38 billion in bonds to build mental health treatment facilities for those with mental health and substance use challenges. Um, it's also meant to provide housing for the homeless. And then um, in terms of local measures, um, we have Measure A uh, for the City of Santa Clara, um, which is a charter amendment for city clerk to be appointed by the city manager. We also have Measure B also for the City of Santa Clara, um, which is a charter amendment for a chief of police to be appointed by the city manager. And then we also have Measure C, Sunnyvale School District, um, which has to do with uh, school bonds. Um, something to keep in mind is that as of October 2023, um, approximately one out of five eligible voters are not registered to vote in Santa Clara County. This means we have a lot of work to do still when it comes to registering voters, um, which is the first step, um, the first step before someone is even able to cast a ballot. So now we're going to go over um, voter registration. So who can vote? Who is eligible to vote? You can vote if you are 18 years or older on election day. You have to be a United States citizen. Um, and to register to vote in California, you have to be a California resident. Um, you can vote if you are not currently in federal or state prison on the conviction of a felony and not currently found mentally incompetent to vote by a court. If you are at least 16 years or older and meet all the other eligibility requirements, you can actually pre-register to vote um, once you turn 16. And then on your 18th birthday, um, you will automatically be registered to vote. So that's why we always encourage everyone um, to register to vote um, as soon as you can. So 
registering to vote, you can either do it online or using a paper copy. Um, to register to vote online by electronic submission, you can um, register to vote at registertovote.california.gov um, or you can postmark a physical paper copy uh, 15 days prior to the election. Um, you can visit the California Secretary of State webpage to register um, in your chosen language. Um, and if you do not provide a driver license or um, social security number when registering, um, you may have to show a form of identification or proof of residency um, the first time you vote. And if the DMV does not have your signature on file and you choose to register online, you will be asked to print out an application, sign it, and then mail it back to your county election officials. Um, when it comes to conditional voter registration, um, this is for if you did not register to vote by the 15-day voter registration deadline, um, you can still conditionally register to vote and cast a provisional ballot, um, only in person though, not electronically, um, by visiting the Registrar of Voters office or a vote center um, during the 14 days prior to and including election day. Um, of course, we always strongly encourage all eligible voters to register um, as soon as possible. So um, a little bit about re-registering to vote. Um, you'll be re-registering to vote if you just moved to Santa Clara County from a different county, if you changed your legal name, or if you want to change your political affiliation. Um, and you will do this using the same form, um, the same the same voter registration form. Uh, for Santa Clara County voters, um, complete a voter action request form if you have already registered to vote, but you want to do um, any of the following. Change your address if you move within Santa Clara County. Um, updating your DMV records does not guarantee your voter registration records will be updated. Um, and so you will need to complete a voter action request form. Um, if you want to change your language preference or correct any misspellings or errors in your registration information, if you want to cancel your voter registration or cancel the voter registration of a deceased member of your family or household. So inactive voters, you are considered an inactive voter if you have not voted in two or more consecutive federal general elections, if you have moved out of the state, or if your mail was returned as undeliverable with no forwarding address. If you are an inactive voter, um, you still have the right to vote, but election officials um, will not need to mail you election materials, um, and you will also not receive a vote by mail ballot um, for Santa Clara County unless you either update your voter registration or contact the ROB's office. Um, if you want to restore your active status, you can either vote in an upcoming election or contact the ROV to confirm your address. Um, and that's why we always encourage everyone, even if you have uh, registered to vote, to check your voter registration status by visiting voterstatus.sos.ca.gov. So for the 2024 California primary, the last day to register to vote um, for the March uh, California primary election is 14 days prior to the election, which is February 20th, 2024. And then conditional voter registration will begin the following day on February 21st, 2024. Um, also keep in mind that normally the last day to register to vote is 15 days prior to an election, um, but because February 19th is a state holiday, um, that deadline is now February 20th, 2024. So here is a timeline leading up to the March primaries. So 29 days before the election, the Registrar of Voters will start to send vote by mail ballots. Um, and this will also be the first day to vote in person at the Registrar of Voters office. Um, and drop boxes will also become available. And this is February 5th. On February 20th, which is 14 days before the election, it will be the last day for traditional voter registration in which um, conditional voter registration um, will begin at the ROB's office the following day on February 21st. And then 10 days before the election, um, certain vote centers will be open, um, also known as the 11-day vote centers, and conditional voter registration um, will begin at vote centers instead of um, simply at the ROB's office. And then three days to the election, um, which is March the 2nd, all vote centers are open, um, including any four-day vote centers, 11-day vote centers, 
And then on election day, um, this year it's going to be March 5th, 2024. The polls will open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. So now we're nearing the end of our presentation. Um, and here we have a couple of ways that you can get involved, um, get civically involved um, with your uh, community. So when it comes to things like voter outreach, um, we find that it's very beneficial to reach out to your personal academic and professional networks um, when it comes to registering eligible, eligible voters. Um, personal network can include things like your friends, your relatives, uh, neighbors, um, and then your academic network might include things like your classmates, TAs, club members, alumni, and your professional network, um, your coworkers, your mentors, your partner organizations, um, et cetera. And you can always refer eligible voters to resources on the Secretary of State webpage for more information on upcoming elections, and that's um, sos.ca.gov slash elections. Um, and another thing you can do is volunteer for any election-related activities. Um, for Asian Law Alliance, um, we do work with poll monitoring, phone banking, canvassing. Um, and while we will not be doing poll monitoring or phone banking um, for the California primaries, we will be um, planning election-related activities for the general election. Um, and so please keep your eye out. Um, for any volunteer related opportunities um, as we are nearing the general election. But of course, we always encourage everyone um, to, uh, to get involved um, and be civically engaged um, all year round when it comes to encouraging people to register to vote, um, when it comes to um, uh, voter education and voter engagement. So this is the end of our presentation. Um, thank you for um, taking the time to join us for our presentation tonight. Um, please feel free and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, our contact information uh, is above. Uh, you can, it has our phone number and also our website, AsianLawAlliance.org. Um, if you're interested in um, finding out more and learning more about our election related work, you can visit our website um, and you can also feel free to reach out um, if you're interested in volunteering with us um, for the upcoming election. Um, but this presentation will be recorded and shared. Um, and so we will share this with everyone at the end um, of tonight. So if we don't have any questions, um, then I will be ending our presentation here tonight. Um, thank you again, and I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Thank you.